Hello and welcome to another training video by West Networks for our Peplink University series. Today we're going to talk about layer 2 speed fusion tunnels. Um, and the goal here is to create a split tunnel using speed fusion and end control so that the primary tunnel will do OSPF of um, layer 3, uh, any known layer 3 or any known networks on e any of the routers over layer 3. And then we're going to have a sub tunnel dedicated to a layer 2 broadcast of our VLAN 10. So the idea is we're going to have an SDX sitting as our hub device. Um, so it's going to be sort of the, the root, if you don't mind, of, of that VLAN 10 network. So it's going to have a, a VLAN 10, uh, 172.16.10.1 slash 24. It's going to be our default gateway and our DHCP server. The remote sites are going to be VLAN 10, uh, 172.16.10.2 and 172.16.10.3. We're just going to do statically assign there. Each of these routers will have an untagged VLAN 192 1 and 2. The help device is connected via gigabit ethernet, and the two uh, remote devices are connected via 5G and LTE. This is a 310 5G, and this is an HD2 5G. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is make sure all of our routers are in in control and online, and they are. There's our SDX, our 310 5G, and our HD2 5G. You can see here my SDX is online with a 192.168.0.1. My 5G is online with a 5.1 and it has our 5G and our LTE. And our HD2 is 192.168.2.1 with our 5G and our LTE. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and create my VLAN, um, my VLAN 10 that we're gonna push out to each of these routers. So I'm gonna to go to my network settings and end control, go to VLAN networks, add a new network. I'm going to call this VLAN 10 dash layer two. I'm going to create a VLAN 10, push this out to all my routers. I'm going to give it an IP address of 172.16.10.1. And then I'm going to make my DHCP unmanaged. Do not enable or disable. I mean, you could do disable, but don't enable it because if you enable it, um, it's going to push that setting every time you change it. So VLAN options are, are pushed. So if you keep it unmanaged, um, it will let you set the uh, layer two options appropriately. Hit save, and there it is. If I go back to my dashboard. I should see that it's pushing those configurations out to each of my routers. There you go, a few seconds ago. So I can pull up my SDX, go to my network settings, go to my network settings here, and there's my layer two VLAN. I can click on this and I can see that my layer two network is set up or my VLAN 10 is set up. If I go to my 310, I can go to my network settings, pull up my network settings right here, and there's my layer two network. So I'm gonna change this one to dot two, and I'm gonna disable DHCP and hit save and apply. And then on my HD2 5G, I'm gonna go to my network settings. Go to my untag or go to my VLAN 10. I'm going to change this one to dot three and turn off DHCP so we don't have any DHCP conflicts, obviously. Hit save and apply. And so now I have um 172.16.10.3, 172.16.10.2, and 172.16.10.1 uh, as appropriately identified there. So now I'm going to go back to end control. And we're going to create our speed fusion with our subtunnel. And then we're going to set up our layer two broadcast. So we're going to go to our speed pep VPN with speed fusion, go to configuration. We're going to enable speed fusion uh, configuration, add a profile. It's going to be a star profile because we have a whole bunch of connections talking to a hub device. So my SDX, I'm going to, so I'm going to choose my SDX. It's got my public IP address there. Click next. I'm going to select my two routers, my 310 5G and my HD2 5G. If you have more routers, you can obviously select them all. Click next. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this uh, Speed Fusion dash SDX. Um, and then I'm going to click Show Advanced Settings here. And then you're going to see this option up here, Link Settings and WAN Settings. The WAN Settings allows you to uh, configure individual WAN options. The Link Settings allows you to um, basically customize these link options inside of a, a, a profile. So we're going to go to our Advanced Link Settings. And you'll see my two tunnels that it's going to create. And you can see that each one of these uh, speed fusion tunnels has one, uh, one primary tunnel. So I'm going to click edit to my 
um, SDX to 310 5G. And I'm going to add a subtunnel. So you see, here's my connection to 310 5G, my connection to my SDX, and then my subtunnel. I'm just going to call this VLAN 10 L2, layer 2 VLAN 10. And that's going to be my subtunnel. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to click edit to the um, 5G, HD2 5G. I'm going to add a new subtunnel, give it the same name, this layer um, VLAN 10 layer 2. Hit save, hit OK, hit save, and then I'm going to hit next and finish and save changes. If you wanted to configure individual link options on those as well, you could do that as well. Um, the purpose of this video is just to show you how to create the subtunnels as well as then enabling layer 2 over that subtunnel. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard. You can see my configurations push. So if I go to the SDX, you can see that I've got my four tunnels here. So I'm going to go to my network tab, go to my network settings under LAN. I'm going to click on my layer two network here, and I'm going to tell it that I want to um, broadcast this as a layer two over speed fusion. So under my network settings right there, there's a question mark. I can click this question mark to define a layer two bridge based on PET VPN. Click here. I'm going to select my connection to the 310 5G VLAN 10 layer 2 and my connection to my HD2 5G VLAN layer 2. And then I'm going to tell it to do nothing because this, this is my default router. So I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hit apply changes and go back and you'll see that those will uh, reset there. And I'm going to go to my 310 5G, refresh this page right here. I'm going to go to my VLAN 10 L2. And so now I'm going to do the same thing. Network settings, click the question mark, layer two bridge. I'm going to select my VLAN 10, my sub profile two, VLAN 10 layer two, click add. And then here I can actually say do not override because I've set a default VLAN here. I can say static and set a static IP, I can which will um, change this IP whenever the tunnels. I can say DHCP, which will grab a DHCP from the master router or I can say do nothing. Here I'm just gonna say do not override because it's a unique IP address and my DHCP is disabled. So I'm gonna hit save and apply. I'm gonna do the same thing for my HD2 5G. I'm gonna come in here. Once again, my DHCP is disabled. My IP is unique, so it's not gonna conflict. So I can click here, get to find layer two bridge based on PEP VPN, click here, and then Select my pre, uh, VPN profile, VLAN 10, and then override the IP address. And I'm going to say do not override because once again, it's a unique IP address. You, you want to override or change how the, the interface uh, IP acts um, depending on if you want to, how you want that layer two network set up. But because I'm statically assigning a unique IP address right here, I can just say do, do nothing. You could also, once again, change the IP address. I can tell it to obtain an IP address from the, uh, the SDX, which is handing out DHCP, or I can actually say just have no IP address on that VLAN. Um, but once again, I'm just going to say do not override. I'm going to hit save and apply changes. You can see it creating that tunnel right there. And there you go. You can see here that I've got, I'm on my HD2 5G. You can see my primary tunnel is using OSPF and it's grabbing the LAN of the SDX, as well as the, the untagged LAN of the 8310 5G. And then here is my subtunnel 2 VLAN 10, which uses the 172.16.10.3 IP address that's already assigned to that interface. Um, and it's bridging VLAN 10. Uh, and then if I go to my 310 5G, you can see the same thing. Here's my primary tunnel. It knows the 192.168.2 of the HD2 5G as well as the 192.168.0 using just layer three OSPF that's being broadcast among the primary tunnel. And then my subtunnel uh, two, which is my VLAN 10 layer two subtunnel, has the bridge of VLAN 10 going out over the 172.16 and with an IP address of interface IP of 172.16.10.2. Um, so you can see those are, those are both established there. And then on the SDX, I've got my four tunnels established, uh, the two tunnels to each router. If I go to the 310 5G and I go to the network settings again, and I go to my port settings, I can then tell my interface uh, ports how to react. So I can say, set this as an access to VLAN 10, my layer 
my VLAN 10 layer 2 sub, sub network if I want to. Or I can just trunk this uh, off to another switch and then have that switch tagged VLAN 10. Um, so once again, this is just a, a normal VLAN 10, so you're gonna make sure you tag that traffic somehow so it can work. If you were to plug in to one, either the 310 5G or the HD2 MBX and um, have VLAN 10 traffic tagging, it's going to get an IP address from the SDX right here. So it's, that's also important to realize that the SDX as the hub device is the thing sending out that DHCP information. So if I go to my speed fusion statistics, there's my four profiles with all of my networks set up. There's my bridge and my bridge as well as my networks. And then my the SDX is ignoring the 172.16 network that it exists on both those remote sites because it's bridging them here and because of OSPF, it's a, a technically a route conflict. And then if I go to my client list, oh, nothing there yet. Let me, let me ping those two routers. Ping. And see, I can ping 172.16.10.2 and then ping 172.16.10.3. Let's see if it shows up in my client list now. There they are. So there's my, my two routers showing up on the client list of the SDX. So anyways, that's how you configure split tunnels and in control two, as well as um, broadcast, convert one of those tunnels into a layer two uh, VLAN. I hope this uh, is useful to you and have a great day.